Now, the Office of the Tax Ombudsman, Judge Bernard Nguope, says it continues with a campaign to raise awareness about its services. Now, essentially, the Ombudsman's Office gives aggrieved taxpayers an opportunity for the issues to be solved outside SARS. It says recent roadshows reveal that even some tax practitioners were not aware of the existence of the office. Presently, the office employs more than 30 staff members and receives 200 cases from taxpayers monthly. Well, it's a pleasure to welcome Tax Ombudsman Judge Bernard Nguepe, who is with us this afternoon. Uh, Judge, thanks very much indeed for coming in. Uh, thank you, and I to you and to your listeners. Are you winning in terms of raising awareness in the public domain about what your office really does? Uh, yes, indeed. And let me start off by saying that sometimes it's quite disappointing that we do have public institutions which are meant to serve the public, and yet members of the public know very little, if anything at all, yep. about them. And one of them is this very office. And uh, we would like people to know about the existence of this office because it's meant to serve them free of charge to try and resolve their problems with SARS. Yep. I mean, uh, we know that your office cannot and does not review legislation or policy, neither does it deal with complaints um, that is about liability for tax or the amount of tax due. So essentially, what does your office actually help the taxpayer with? It deals with complaints relating to um, service matters or procedural or administrative matters. Yep. And perhaps let me simplify or in fact oversimplify that because that sounds too legalese. Um, we deal with complaints brought by people in connection with their tax affairs in relation to SARS. For example, in the manner in which they feel they feel they've been dealt with or not dealt with properly and so on and so forth. And let me hasten to add that people need not worry too much about whether or not their complaint falls within our jurisdiction or mandate. Yeah. If you feel you have got a complaint, just come to us, we'll listen to you. If that complaint does not fall within our jurisdiction, we'll let you know. Not only will you will we let you know, but we'll also advise you how best the manner should be take the matter should be take taken further. All right, we're going we're to put up those email addresses on screen as we do now. Uh, l l let me ask you, when it comes to independence, Judge, I mean, in meeting out your mandate, when it comes to independence, you've, you've raised this before. Uh, the fact that, you know, essentially you are a SARS watchdog and, and your role becomes even more difficult when you don't have the full legal status or probably the structural and institutional independence to actually meet out your mandate. Is this a goal you think you will win in the future? Uh, we ought to because there is a need not just for the existence of the office of a tax ombud, but that it must also be independent of SARS. As you have just correctly said, we are a city where a uh, watchdog over SARS, yeah. which would have to mean that we have to be s not only be independent, but to be seen to be independent and indeed structurally independent of SARS. There are some challenges around that particular issue. We may have to go into them later, but there are some challenges in that, in that respect which we are trying to address. But we value very highly our independence of SARS, and we need the public to understand that we are very, very much independent of SARS. We are not part of SARS, actually. How, do, how does government respond to your calls to be more independent? Um, the, the response has not been good, and let me say it now that um, I did raise some of these issues which give an impression of com compromising our independence. I did write to the office of the previous minister. I did not get any response, and uh, I have just recently um, raised the matter with the new minister, who himself had in fact uh, established this office before he was moved to another portfolio. Indeed. I sincerely hope that we will now get a response relation to this. And if we are not going to get any response about these issues, which I've raised, uh, I think I'm going to make more and more noise until Cape Town up to Messina hear me about this issue. Because we f I feel very strongly about this. The ministry needs to attend to the issues that we have raised in our reports to parliament, as also the, the office of the minister. We cannot have this kind of situation going on forever. And presumably the independence is important because you're dealing uh, w with issues of, let, let, let's take the issue of capital flight, for example, and illicit financial flows, which erodes South Africa's tax base. I mean, it helps that an institution like yours is independent 
so that you can give your views on, on, on what you think could be the possible solutions to this. What are those? What? Uh, the, the, let's take the issue of capital flight and illicit financial flows. What I'm saying is that uh, an independent body is probably more likely to give a solid opinion on what the possible solutions could be to curb this sort of thing. Yes, it's absolutely imperative uh, that we need to be seen to be independent so that when we make suggestions, they should be seen to be coming from a, an impartial body. Remember also, by the way, that the ultimate objective of our office, not just to exist for the sake of existing or just palliating the problems which the public have, yeah. the idea is ultimately to facilitate tax collection, which is very important in, for the economy. And very fundamentally, we need to facilitate uh, tax compliance mm. from members of the public. You can only achieve that if firstly you are impartial yep. and secondly independent and you are a credible, credible voice to listen to. Let's talk about that, Judge. I mean, the issue of tax compliance and people actually paying their tax. I mean, the e-tolls, the Inkandla matter, various controversies around service deliveries, the sentiment of uh, people holding back their money, justifying what they call so-called tax abuse. We also see organizations coming up fighting tax abuse. Um, this sentiment should be a very, very concerning one when we're collecting revenue, isn't it? Well, what's your thoughts on that? Well, um, my thoughts are on the issue are as strong as yours and his and hers and so on. Because it's important that when people need to understand why they pay tax. And if people understand that tax is being paid for the purpose of helping the poor and so forth and so on, then people will do that. You know, uh, sometimes back I was in Canada and I was in a taxi and a taxi driver said to me, I don't mind paying tax and I pay it willingly because I know uh, when I'm ill, the government will look after me and so on and so forth. That is the kind of spirit that has got to underline our tax collection system. But does it concern you that, that there's an emergence of a sentiment where the money is not being used properly? I mean, it's certainly there. How do we counter that? Uh, well, I think we should counter that. This is an overall suggestion. We need to counter that by holding accountable those who are in charge of our national purse. And it's very important uh, that should happen because unless people are made to, to understand that tax will be used properly for their benefit and not for the benefit of some people who are somehow connected to senior politicians or whatever or business people, whatever, unless people begin to understand that, then you're going to have a problem in collecting tax, as you should, from members of the public. Are we doing a final question? Are we doing a good job in trying to convince the uh, taxpaying person that, uh, that, that we have a, a solid route in using their tax money? Sorry? I'm saying, are we doing a good job in terms of convincing uh, the taxpayer I that their money would be used correctly? Well, I, I, I'm not sure. Well, perhaps uh, good can also be better and better and better. Mm. But I think there must be a, an obligation of, of those whose duty it is um, uh, to, to ensure that we are for a, an effective tax collection system. And those who are in charge of the pairs, to make the public to understand that uh, uh, well, what the purpose of the money is that we collect for and assure everybody to the extent that we can that the money is being used properly and for their benefit. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem about collecting tax. Judge Bernard Nguapia, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. You're it's welcome. been a pleasure.